I knew from 12 years old, I knew that someday I'd be wearing the uniform. You know, how could I be a part of this kind of army, you know? I had never seen the army like that. I've, I've only been around professional people, you know? And to see that happen blew my mind. I thought, how can they not believe me? I was absolutely just mortified. I was terrified. I had no idea what to do. Then this happened, and I didn't want to be associated with anyone who wore this the U.S. Army tag. By then, I had lost faith in every single person that was wearing this uniform. That crushed me because it just took my entire life goal and just shattered it instantly. I kind of re-victimized myself over and over again by thinking that this isn't the outcome, and I can't believe that they didn't believe me. I understand you think these guys are your friends and your buddies and your unit, but they're not. They're not supposed, they're not the qualities that we want in an army, and they need to get eradicated. What happened to me 18 years ago was everything that you hear about when it comes to Sharp. My incident when it happened, uh, a staff sergeant who was the floor sergeant for my barracks actually heard me screaming and came out and I told him what had happened. He had kind of cornered me and he, he knew what he could do where other privates wouldn't see from the bay. It all kind of worked its way into what it became, but he was very, he was very sly. Two of the NCOs especially, I knew right off the bat that their character was severely lacking. And I felt that they were trying to um, make me feel my rank, make me feel that I was beneath them, that they were in charge, that they owned me. I had so much confidence in the Army. You know, I'd, I'd give my life for the Army. Even though my perpetrator did this to me, like, I knew he was going to get in trouble. Like, I knew it because the Army is going to take care of their own. And I definitely trusted the Army. At the time, we didn't think that it was a criminal hazing. We didn't think that it was rape. We didn't want to admit it to ourselves that this actually happened. I felt that I could trust them, and I did trust them. I gave them that respect because they were treating us well. Everything that I got really was mentorship. And so it was really my organization that supported me and helped me through it. So I went and I talked to Sergeant Major, and he he finally put his foot down. It was really the people directly around me that still treated me like I was a valued member of the team. Well, I did have the option to get out of the Army. Um, I chose not to. It started as a little thing, and then those things build up. They escalate. So if you can catch things early on and prevent that, you need to change the attitude of your guys and your leaders and make sure that that stuff isn't happening. It should be, we should be treating each other as professionals. The advice that I would give to victims is report it and then trust the process. Going to college, going to drill sergeant school, going to airborne school, having friends around me that supported me throughout good or bad um, was something that was very important to me. And so you have to find things that are positive in your life. For other soldiers out there who this you know, any, any sort of harassment or assault or rape, um, bring it to somebody's attention. I had a lot of briefings, had a lot of um, basically on platoon levels breaking down and talking about what was going on and how to fix things. I believe in the process. I think it's very important that, that military justice prevails.